and networking is a form of a skill, right? It's something that you can develop and get and get better at. You know what I mean? Um, and if you practice it a bunch, meaning put yourself in the position to shake hands, to have conversations with people, over time you'll get better. right what's up everybody welcome 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 back to another episode of the good life visual audio podcast i'm one of your hosts see moves on i got coach could be in the building say what's up coach what up that's right happy to be here brother i'm glad you're here i thought you're gonna give it another attempt bro and honestly i thought you're gonna thought you're gonna give it a Give it a whirl. We are your brothers behind the mic, your uncles behind the board, and we're here to give you the truth. You better get on board. Hey. Yay. Yay. We did it. I got we go. it. We get it better. We get it better, guys. We get it, we'll better. Get it better. It's gonna keep perfecting. Like we're gonna we're gonna get really good at it. But uh glad everybody's tuning in thank you again for everybody that's listening and watching has been engaging with us uh again we are here to talk over topics around health and wealth get you to the life that you deserve right like we talk to uh all types of people obviously myself being in the financial space being a financial coach coach could be here coaching over on the health side of things uh and he, as a lifestyle designer, do you still go by that term, bro? Yes, sir. Like, yes, lifestyle. sir. And we're we're life... going to talk about that a little bit more, too, because, you know, we got some offers coming up here that align with that a little bit more. So yes. There we go. Yes. There we go. So we are here, again, to impart some knowledge, some information on you. Again, for everybody that uh, has been tuned in or has been uh, joining us, uh, again, we appreciate it. Uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. If you have not yet gone over and joined our Facebook group, go ahead and do that. Uh, again, if you're watching this live right now, tomorrow we have our another workshop upcoming, another uh, one of our uh, blueprint workshops that we, uh, could be and myself, are going to dive into the specific topics and nuances around health and wealth, something that will help you build more of your foundation in these areas. It's going live tomorrow, that workshop on Facebook, only in the Facebook group. So join the Facebook group so you can get access to all this great, great info and content that we are trying to get you. And again, share this with somebody that you know wants to take their life to the next level and really design the life that they deserve um, or just have some questions around their health and their wellness. How was your week, man? Week has been great. Started off slow. Got a look, got productive here towards the end. And um, yeah, we're continuously improving, man. It's just step by step. Uh, I don't know if there's any other way. If there is, let us know in the comments. Um, but yeah, excited to have the opportunity that wasn't a glitch guys that was that was just me <laughs> thinking right there have the opportunity to to build i was telling my wife this i was like let's you know sometimes i'm so in the weeds that i i, I lose sight of the bigger picture that i actually have the opportunity here uh to build a company right to work on something like this and uh, not everybody does whether they have to go into work and uh, sell their time. And, and so they don't, you know, they feel they don't have time or, or, or they're just not even in the situation or they don't live in the right place. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen here in life. You know, I started off as a snotty nose kid in Pukwasi, Ghana. We didn't have a thing, right? You know, I remember drinking sugar water and, and, and we lucky to get bread for dinner, man. So, you know, um, Spirit of gratitude this week in a, in a position that we're in to be able to build, uh, to help people, uh, to make a difference. Um, and quite frankly, man, life, uh, life, life is great. Life is great. So how That's about you, awesome. brother? Things are great. Dana says, hey to you, man. What's up? NBA, you let them know. <laughs> I know. Look at her, right? Putting it on there. Uh, but in the same vein, that spirit of gratitude I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm, uh, I hold a morning mindset call Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. If you want the link, right, you can try to find the link and we'll get it to you. But at the end of the day, I always tell the people on that morning mindset call, are we waking up 
with an attitude of gratitude. The first thing in your in in your day is you can flood your mind with gratitude. You'll start to notice more of the things that you're grateful for throughout your day. And in all honesty, again, it gives you a good disposition, a good outlook on your days and your weeks. Um, that one point of, I don't have to, I get to. That's what you were just saying. I don't have to build the, I, I don't have to do all these things that are, I'm in the weeds on and right. It gets stressful and right. All this pressure. It's not that I have to do this, man. We should be great. I get to do this. I, I get the opportunity to build something that I'm passionate about, that I care about. Sure. There's going to be things that we got to pay attention to and might stress us out a bit, but the fact that we can just change our language to say, I get to do this. Like that's a privilege. That's a blessing. Not everyone gets the opportunity to do what you're doing, to do what we're doing here. So in the same vein, gratitude is the key, ladies and gentlemen. Gratitude is the key. That's it. That's, That's right. It. Any Detroit news? What's up in Detroit? I feel like I saw a clip. Oh, no, I got to figure it out. I feel like I saw something happen crazy in Detroit. Is that where that guy punched that lady? I don't know. <laughs> I don't Probably. know. Probably. On might any have, given Thursday? It might have been. <laughs> No, that that might have been somewhere else. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing, the thing to pay attention right now to in Detroit is uh, we have football coming up here pretty soon. I, I, I'm I'm telling y'all, and I'm telling y'all this again. Please pay attention. I'm not telling you to go out there and place a bet or of any sorts. You know, I don't encourage gambling, but if you do, just feel good about the Detroit Lions, right? Definitely coming out of their division, uh, and and for sure. Um, I believe we'll have a great shot at the Lombardi trophy. Um, and also with Monty Williams here, I've been telling y'all this week, I just got to repeat it because sometimes you guys don't, you know, you, you, you know, you, you don't hear it. Maybe you miss a show. You know, I understand, you know, I get busy too. Uh, but yeah, the lions and, and, and then of course the Pistons, the Pistons, the young up and coming Pistons, that's what you want to watch in Detroit. What did and they do in the draft? What did what did the Pistons do in the draft? Do we even know? Because I'm sure they had a pretty high pick because they suck. So listen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to excuse the hatred coming here from my uh, this side of the of, of the equation. Um, it's okay, you know, being in Philadelphia. Sometimes you get you get that smoke in your lungs, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know you you end up you end up with a little bit of hatred in your heart. That's all right. That's all right. You know, I'll oh, stay strong to the Lions. Roar! Yeah, keep keep deflecting because the Pistons are still stuck <laughs> this year. But yes, go back to the Lions. It's all good. Anyways, shout out to Detroit as always. We got to get out there. Uncle Jalen, we got to see you at some point. Have you on the show at least, right? Come That'll be great. Show. That'll be great. Hembo, can we tag Uncle Jalen? Can Just, we tag? A, and you know what? Tag Uncle Jacoby too, man. I miss that. I miss that duo. Mm. You know, that was my favorite podcast. I miss them. So... You know, tag her. Maybe we can. Maybe we can go. You know, maybe we should donate. Ah, oh, this is what we should do. Mm. This is how. This is how. Hey, Hembo, let's mark right. this right here. Right here. Let's mark it. All the sounds. <laughs> right. Let's mark this. Okay. What's the, what's the A A M S R S? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wild. Weird. Weird. Not weird at all. If you're making money doing that, I envy you. Right. Um, it work it work we should do a fundraiser for the jlr uh, uh jalen rose leadership academy we should do a fundraiser that way we can attach maybe a little note and that's how we get to meet uncle jalen i like i like the way you think Woo! and we help the kids and we help the kids right yeah and we help I, the kids i like the way you educated. think let's do that yeah we're, we're, we're gonna start a fundraiser that's right that's episode right. episode 125 mark this episode fundraiser. 125 fundraiser going specifically to the Jalen Rose leadership was it Jalen Rose leadership academy the no no tuition uh uh school that Jalen Rose started uh in Detroit mm. yeah yeah where kids they do I believe they go K to 12 I believe and they even support the students after they've gone to college and I believe even after they've graduated, mm. my school didn't do that. <laughs> I think my wife, I feel like my wife's school does. She went to a boarding school. Ah, I well, feel like, yeah, I feel like they do some stuff like that, but most schools don't. My school didn't. No, so. Particularly not schools, uh, you know, 
Yeah. Schools, uh, mm. schools in underserved communities. Let's, let's call it that. Let, let's say, let, let's say that. Let's say that. <laughs> Correct. Particularly maybe... green schools. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we can change that, right? Maybe we can change that. Either way, let's dive in. We're going to put a pin in that because I. That's going to. I think we can touch on a little bit of that as we go into our actual, you know, show today, where we're going to talk a little bit more about networking and how that benefits the entrepreneurial journey. But for right now, let's go into our segment we call two by two. Two by two. Just let's just read it. It says the US Department of Agriculture has approved the sale of cell culture chicken. A major breakthrough for the industry. Start- startups, good meat, and upscale foods received the first approvals following earlier clearance from the FDA. Cultured meat is grown from animal stem cells and resembles traditional meat. It considered It's considered healthier and more sustainable. Singapore is the only other country to approve its sale. The USDA will inspect cultured meat facilities and the products will be labeled as cell cultured or cell cultivated chicken. Cell cultivated chicken. Despite challenges including scaling production and consumer acceptance the industry shows significant potential for the future could be lab grown meat lab grown chicken what are we doing what's your take why oh why oh why does america hate real food this is unbelievable and you know what The most egregious thing about this is that it's announced as good news. Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S., here in the U.S., we waste pounds and pounds of food on a day-to-day basis. Even if the restaurants wanted to, they can't give it out because of regulations. Now we're talking about growing meat in the lab. What are we doing? What are we doing? Listen. There is a reason why if you eat meat, they tell you, for example, beef, they tell you to get grass fed beef. There's a reason why they charge more for pasture raised chickens. There's a reason they charge more for their eggs as well. There's a reason why nature does what it does. Why must we continue to mess with the beautiful Food that nature provides in the name of science, in the name of providing more for the people. We don't knew that. We don't need to do that. It's a lie. It's a farce. And quite frankly, it's a lie farce. <laughs> yes, you hear it. You heard it here first. A lie farce. Okay. We do not need lab grown chicken meat. And guys, listen. A two-year-old could tell you this. Everything we need and love, we learned in kindergarten. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And we are not prepared for the consequences. We are not prepared for the box that we're opening. We are essentially heading down a path where this, guys, listen, I wish I had my shirt on me. This is about the money. This ain't about feeding more people because we can do that right now if we just change some of the things that we're doing. And quite frankly, I just want to ask America, why do we hate real food? Somebody answer that for me. I don't think they can. I don't think they can. Shake it. Shake it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think they can answer that question. I'm Again, I'm I'm on the same side as you. Like, what are we doing? Why, why do we have to do this? And again, I don't think we, under, just like you said, I don't think we understand what this opens the door to, how this affects our body, all of those things. It's definitely a money play, though. And I see it from a money play from two different sides. One, do you think this meat's going to be expensive or cheap? What do you think? It's going to be appropriately priced for the company to make a nice profit. So I would lean towards cheaper. I would also. That's exactly what I think. Because they can produce more, faster, less costs, right? It's going to – you're going to find one day. 
uh, a pack of, you know, six pounds of chicken breast for $5, for $3. And you're going to be okay with it because it feeds more of your family. This is what they do to us, right? They make things more convenient. They make things that may, that are not good for us become something that we say, hmm, maybe I'll just do that because it's convenient. And that's what this is. It's going to be produced in mass form, and we're going to get the next generation hooked on it. We're going to get underserved communities hooked on it. We're going to get food deserts hooked on it. We're going to get all these places, all the people, the masses hooked on this, these products, this lab-grown meat. And I don't know if you saw the video or any of you saw the video, like they showed the inside of the of the um, facility. It looks like a brewery. If you've ever been to like a brewery, it just has gigantic tubs, gigantic like steel, steel like tubs, just making meat. Like we're going to get people hooked on this. It's going to have a detriment to our society, but it's going to be cheap. People are going to buy in because, again, like you said, they're spinning this like it's good news. They're spinning this like we're this the second country <laughs> to approve it, only behind Singapore. Why is that good? <laughs> why why is that where we want to be? And EYL, y'all should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I've had enough. Okay, I've had enough. All right. You keep selling this garbage to the black community as if it's good news. It is not good news. Oh, I think that. Listen, hold up. I think they're just reporting the news. No, 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 no. Whoever makes those posts sounded very, very chipper in the copy. OK, they sounded very, very optimistic in the copy. Oh, this is going to solve hunger issue. No, it's not. It's still going to have people hungry on the streets. Why? Because they're going to toss out all of this. Gar listen, y'all need to stop. OK, EYL, I'm calling you out. All right. What is this? Wednesday. Uh, 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 this is uh, uh, we should we should do a segment called Trash Talking Tuesday. Where I, we could call <laughs> we could call it Hembo Mark this which Trash Talking Tuesday. And you guys like that. Uh, um, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll put that on the show. But EYL, I've had enough. OK, I've read too many health posts where I'm like, who is approving these posts? Why is this positive? How on God's green earth? Does this help the black community? It doesn't at all. And in fact, guys, I'm calling y'all out, okay? This, hey, we're creating our own health academy, okay? We're creating our own health academy, and we're going to educate the people, not just black people, but all people who eat, okay? We're going to educate them about this stuff because this is not positive news. The way they're spinning it is it's complete garbage. This is not positive in any way, shape, or form. How about we stop wasting all this food, okay? We stop wasting all these food. We, we get rid of these regulations that put farmers in a bind. God, listen, holy chicken. All right. This is right on right online, guys. Holy chicken. Go watch that documentary, Holy Chicken. See what they're doing to already real chickens. Okay. In the name of producing more and more and more and more and more. Okay. We don't need these things. We need to stop. We need to stop and work with what we have. We have plenty. There's there's plenty of food here for everybody if we become better stewards of what we already have. I agree. But I'm letting EYL off the hook because I like those guys, and they do a great job. Oh. And listen, they're a business and finance podcast. They are not a health podcast, All right. so it's then okay. Stick to that. Listen, that's right. Maybe they then should. That's why that. I said they're just reporting the news it did have a little bit of a spin on it, right? That it was good. But oh, just it, was, it had a whole lot of top spin. <laughs> but understand they're a business and finance podcast. So all good. Let them off the hook. Even but, some of their business advice garbage. Mm, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I still like you guys. Let's uh, this is have, not about like, man. I'm sure they're great people. I'm, I'm sure, sure they're great I'm people. sure they are. You know, but I'm I mean, sure they, they're great people. But we got to call, call them out when, when, when we need to. Shoot, they would call us out. That's very true. They would, you know, we got to call them out. You, 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 this health spin y'all put, stop it. In fact, go ahead and give me a call. I'll go ahead. I, I'll, I'll help y'all out for, for a frumple cookie. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't either. I don't either. I don't either. But either way, that's what we'll help you out for. Uh, yeah. So thumbs down on the lab grown meat, but we're going to see this happen. I have a feeling. It's <clears throat> 
what's what's really funny is, and this is where I wrap up, we've probably already been eating it. They're just now telling us that it's now a thing, right? Like that's the truth. Probably that's already. The truth. They've already tested this out on plenty of things. Oh, it's, yeah. been, it's been in your McDonald's McChicken oh, for yeah. very for a very long time. Along you've with all, poop. Yep, along with all those things. And now yeah. they're just bringing it out to say, hey, guys, we're going to have it. But watch. You've already, already been there. Yeah. It's already. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you've already consumed it. So there's a post that's going to come out here on my Instagram, at Coach Kabi. Y'all go check it out. It talks about the level of poop. Yes, you heard that right. Poop. We've been drinking poop in our fast food. Mm. Okay. Now, they only tested fast food. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, listen, I got nothing against poop. Got nothing against poop. Just saying, don't want to eat it. That's it. Don't want to eat it. That's it. Call not, me what you will. Not a fan. Not a fan of that. Anyways, stay stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We'll bring you more on the lab-grown meat. But to today's episode, we're talking about networking. That word, networking, as an entrepreneur. A lot of times, and maybe somebody drop it in the chat, do you feel like you should network as an employee also? I'm sure it's probably important. But we talk a lot about it in the entrepreneur space of how networking can really accelerate your growth as an entrepreneur, how it really puts you in the right positions. Uh, so we wanted to spend a little time breaking out because some of you we know that are listening, you're in the process of transitioning or wanting to transition. You're heading towards something where you're starting a startup business. You're starting a startup company, right? Like you have ideas. There's things that you're putting in place. Maybe you have been running a small business for a little bit. Maybe you're in the side hustle game and you got a few side hustles, but you want to be able to eventually transition out of your job. Uh, maybe again, like I said, you're just a corporate athlete. You're in, you're, you know, an executive and you just want to continue to climb the ranks. You want to be able to get to the next company or, you know, jump and uh, advance your career. Networking, aka shaking hands with people, getting to know your network, building out your, 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 your influence, the people that are around you, the people that have influence, the people you have influence with is crucial. It's crucial. And so I wanted to take some time today to talk about this and let's just kind of open up the conversation a little bit and start, uh, could be, I'll throw it to you. Like, yeah. let's just start with kind of ideas, definitions, like what, what is networking to you? How did you kind of get introduced to it? What are your thoughts on it up front? So I would simply call networking, making new friends mm -hmm. and, uh, be, because that speaks to the intention, mm -hmm. right? Nothing is worse than somebody quote unquote networking with you because they feel they that there's something they can get from you which is typically kind of how this is taught this is at least how i learned it throughout school right go network with these people because they can help you okay mm -hmm. i i think it's important for that intention to shift because you actually attract more and this is something that i'm working on in my life and in my business is taking that approach and I think the, the book, I believe, uh, what is it called? The Given Tree. The Given Tree. Let's go ahead and highlight that, Hembo, for, for the folks here. The Given Tree. Let's make sure we put that in the show notes as well. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic in terms of shifting my perspective from what can I get from these people to how can I be of value mm. to these people? How can I bring... How can I bring something? How can I give something without expecting anything, right? And the more of that that we do, I think the networking or the network takes care of itself, right? And this is something that you've also spoken about quite a bit, and, and I have a great deal of respect for you for it. Um, the given tree, I would definitely pick that up in terms of the definition and how to go about it. That's huge. That's huge. And I and, and I love what you said, right? Just making friends, right? Building relationships. That's really what this is about. If you ever hear the saying cliche, your network is your net worth, right? Your network equals your net worth. Wow. Right. <laughs> that 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 saying, 
means, right? Like the people that you build relationships with, that you get around, that know you, that love you, that trust you, that you trust them and care about them and you give, there, there's value added on both sides. That's how you grow businesses, incomes, revenues, right? Like there's a lot of that that happens. Your network, the people that you're around, the people that you spend time with become a level of how you're moving up in society, moving around in society, those things. So it's really a lot about those relationships, adding value, something real key that you said. I learned this. So I was trying to think back as I asked you the question of like, how did, how did you learn networking or like, how did you come across it? I tried to think about like how I learned about like kind of what net networking is. And it wasn't until I really became an entrepreneur and got into, you know, financial services and this, you know, financial coaching path and the insurance space where you have to be known, right? Like you have to go shake hands with people. The people that you know are not going to be the people that build your business, whatever business you're trying to build. They're not going to be the people that are going to do it for you. So you have to get around the right people, the people that are, that either you can add value to and they can add value to you. It works both ways, right? And that, I learned that very early in being an entrepreneur that, hey, I had to go shake hands. And most importantly, I had to be personable. I had to like people. I had to get people to like me. I had to understand how to maneuver and move around in, in certain scenarios, in certain situations, in certain environments. And that becomes a skill after a while. After a while, you start learning the skill sets of how to build a relationship. Because if we're going to say networking is building a relationship, how good are we at building relationships? How good? Like, I think that's a question you can pose. Like, how good are you, are you at building a relationship? Are all your relationships broken in like your personal life? Forget your business life. Like in your personal life, do you have really good, solid relationships with people? Or are they kind of faltering and lacking a bit on that side because we don't put energy and time into it? Well, same thing if you're growing a business or growing a company. What's your relationships like? Are you good with people? Are you good to people? That's an important thing to pay attention to. That becomes a skill. Uh, I'll leave this last part and then we'll kind of, uh, I'll toss it back over to you. Uh, I learned this from a book. I don't remember the book. No, it's not up there. I thought it was, but it's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, wait, earthquake? What happened? <laughs> no, there, there's a book. There's a bookshelf, but I thought I had the book up there, but it's not. I thought I saw it, but it's either way. I read a networking book or a book about how to network um, or prospect. I can't remember what it was, but either way, in the book, I got this note, this, this, this tip that I've used at every networking event that I've ever been to. Every single networking event. The number one thing that people do when you're in this of these events, getting to know people, building relationships, passing out business cards, shaking hands, those things. The number one thing people go there and do is they always want to bring attention to themselves and what they do. Oh, I want people to know what I do. Here's my card. Here's my card. Reach out. Oh, is this what this is what I do? Right. It's very I centered when most people go to networking events in the book. It taught us how to be you centered, meaning adding value to the person. So the number one question, this is going to be a good nugget for anybody taking notes. The number one question to ask when you're at a networking event to all of the people you talk to is, hey, how can I, who's, who's your ideal prospect? How can I know when I'm talking to the right person for you? That's the number one question that you ask every person at a networking event or a business event or something. Hey, how can I know, like, who are you looking for? Who's your ideal customer? Who's your ideal client? How can I know if I'm talking to the right person for you? Let them tell you who they're looking for. What's funny, most entrepreneurs don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> That's what you'll learn, right? Because they're so like, oh, I'm just trying to get it, my business out, but you don't really know who you're looking for. But if I ask that question and you do know, and then it just so happens in that same networking event, I find someone else that matches that description, I'll connect you to. Just right there on that same, at that same event. I'll talk to Bob. I'll ask Bob, hey, Bob, like, how can I know when I'm talking to the right person for you? How can I know when, you know, I'm talking to the right prospect? And he'll say, you know, I'm really looking for that, you know, person that's a CFO that runs this type of company and is looking to use the SaaS product, blah, 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 blah. 
I go over, I wind up talking to 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 Jane over here, and Jane's like, Oh, I'm I'm a CFO and I do the blah blah blah. I'm like, have 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 you talked to Bob? Have have you gone over to talk? matter of fact, let me connect you. I think he's looking for you. It'd be a good introduction. That's networking. I just added value to two people's lives. Two people's lives. Both of those people got the connection. They might both need it and use it. Who's in the middle of that? I am. I added value to them. I didn't just say, oh, I'm a financial coach. If you need me, do you know anybody that's looking to get ahead financially? Like, that's what most people do. And that, when I learned that one tip, when I understood that one thing about networking, it changed me from this I centered, I focused to the you focused. And it changed, it changed the networking game. So that's my piece of advice. Add value. You already said it, but add value to people because that's really the thing that's that's gonna help. So that is huge. We can end the podcast right there because we just explain what networking is, what to focus on, and specifically how to do it is what Chris just laid down for you guys. Extremely helpful. And uh quite quite honestly, I know if again, even if you're not taking notes, uh maybe you should. And I am certainly taking a mental note, huh? Huh? Mm-hmm. Of, uh, mm-hmm. of 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 the question here, and um, that's a we'll game go changer. Ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is absolute game changer right there. And we'll go ahead and continue uh, to remind you guys of that because I think, right. yeah, I think that's huge. That's huge. Now, now you 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 put your and I'm gonna kind of switch gears just a little bit on that because you're in a position right now could be where. Uh, you're networking a little bit differently, right? Like, I don't know if you want to let out all the details about it, but like, if you want to slide into a little insight of what it's like to network in maybe an organized kind of uh, program, right? Where people put people in front of you, like speak to that because not everyone gets privy to that side, but you also have seen the importance of it too, right? Uh, Absolutely. So so I'm part of a startup and uh, what we're doing here is uh, we're essentially working on a device that's going to take any smart watch, any watch, you know, whatever watch you love and turn it into a smart watch. And uh, we've been part of an accelerator here coming up on a month. Uh, and so I'll be traveling back and forth to Indiana. But the piece of it that's been really key for this particular conversation is that the most value that we've gotten so far, and I believe we'll get out of that, um, out of this experience is what you would call networking. So we're literally, literally doing a round tape, like days and days and days of just having short, like speed dating conversations uh, with different individuals who are essentially saying, how can I even possibly be helpful? And some of them can be helpful and some of them can't. And we're, the f- simple fact that we're spending almost one third of the time uh, or more uh, on this tells you how important it is and also has opened up certain opportunities has in terms of actually uh, things that can be done, but also open up our minds in terms of like, well, you know, there's nothing I can really give you, but did you think about this? Right. Did you think about this aspect of it or, oh, hey, you should talk to X, just like you just explained. And so it became very clear to me that, wow, this is a huge piece of a, of accelerating. Right. The business <laughs> is making the right connections, putting the right people in the room. And so that, that's been a huge lesson for me as I've as I've been, you know, blessed to be part of this process. Uh, to see it take place, that this is such an area of emphasis and really, uh, quite honestly, like the major area of emphasis beyond like, you know, how much money I can give you or invest um, beyond anything else. It's been the different types of people that we've had the opportunity to speak with. So it just, again, goes back to it. And I would, I will admit, uh, uh, maybe call myself out here a little bit. This is a real area of, of growth for me, a focus of growth for me. Um, so I tend to I tend to work in in, in silos. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how I grew up. I was I was an only child for a while before I became the oldest of five. And I, I got used to kind of working by myself and doing things by myself and doing projects by myself, et cetera. All, although I'm fairly decent with folks, I intro quote unquote introvert by nature i need to go recharge by myself right mm-hmm. so i have to be intentional about 
what I'm doing when I'm out amongst folks. Right? I, I just realized being out amongst folks doesn't recharge my battery. It actually expands my battery. Sure. However, what I'm going to do is take this approach that you just uh, outlined here, because I think that might help in terms of recharging my battery. Yeah, it's huge. It takes a lot of the pressure off you to perform, basically, because that's what happens a lot of times. We're telling them about us, about what we're trying to do, about our thoughts, visions, da 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 da. Oh, there's no pressure here to perform, brother. Ah, look at you, man. <laughs> Ch champion, champion talk. Uh, but but again, that that will that is a that is a, um, a, a tactic, I guess you could say, that can help you just find ways to add more value, to shift it a little bit. Um, but again, I think, again, just like you said, the fact that this you're spending a third of your time just sitting down with people like you would think it's like, oh, let's get the technology together and let's think mm. of our marketing plan and let's think of our sales plan and let's figure out who we're getting into and blah, 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 and all the things. And in this program, they're just putting you in front of people that are like, how can I help? Here's what I do. How can I help you? What do you need? How does this work? OK, maybe you talk to this person. So networking again, is the key to, to success as, a, as an entrepreneur, as someone that's growing something. Robert Kiyosaki says business is a team sport. Business is a team sport. So even if you feel self-employed and you're, it's you, you're a small team, you got one, two, three, five people, business is a team sport. You need other people that are role players, that uh, are general managers, that are right, that, that, that are the front office, that are the coaches, that are the training staff. Like you need people that specialize in different things, even if you are the star player, even if you are the go to player, it's fine. You still need the rest of that that team to be in place. And that's where networking comes in. So, ladies and gentlemen, you got to go talk to people. You have to talk to people. Communication is is one of those keys, one of those uh, uh, attributes that you have to continuously work on and get better. That's why we said networking is a form of a skill, right? It's something that you can develop and get and get better at. You know what I mean? Um, and if you practice it a bunch, meaning put yourself in the position to shake hands, to have conversations with people, over time you'll get better. And I think you hit on the you know, point a lot of people say, oh, I'm an introvert. You know what I mean? But I wanted everyone to hear what could be said. That is, that's the definition I go by. I believe that's the technical definition of introvert to extrovert. It's really how you recharge, right? What your nature is to recharge. So I'm an introvert also. I, when I used to work at the Cheesecake Factory back in the day, Right. And I would come home from uh, a 10 hour shift, a nine hour shift. My wife would have to give me 45 minutes alone because I was just overstimulated for the past 10 hours talking to a bunch of people. So when I got back, I couldn't talk to anyone. Like I literally needed a recharge every night because of what I was doing, even though I was super personable. Everybody loved me. I love talking to people. Right. Like the whole nine. So sometimes we don't know that definition of like, well, I'm an introvert. No, really, you're scared, right? <laughs> you're not actually an introvert. You're actually just really scared and you have fear and anxiety and social anxiety and those things and you're calling yourself an introvert. But technically, it's really just about how you get recharged and right, like what you need to kind of get back to yourself. Some people need to go to the game, need to party, need to get in front of the people. And they're like, man, that was a really good night. Okay, now I can go back to work and I can do my thing, right? Because they needed to be around the people, around the environment. That's the extrovert side, right? But I just want people to understand, don't limit yourself from networking because you think you're an introvert or you're not extroverted. You don't have to, I'm ne I never try to be the center of attention anywhere. I never try to be the center of attention anywhere, but I have no problem talking to people everywhere I go. Right. So I think we have to be able to balance those those couple things as we're stepping off into this uh, this journey of entrepreneurship. Yeah, I think that's huge. And, uh, you know, quite honestly, I mean, it's, uh, I'll leave you with these last few thoughts here. I think <clears throat> there is a difference to me. There's a difference between um, communication skills, networking skills and sales skills, although mm -hmm. it's kind of like a Venn diagram of the three. Mm -hmm. Right. And you need, you know, some are better at others, at one of those than the other. To network does not mean that you have to be a good talker, right? 
to be good at sales does not have to be, does not mean that you have to be a good talker. To be to be a good communicator does not have to mean that you're a good talker, right? However, when you ask people, that's what they think. They think, you know, myself as well. I used to think, you know, you got to be able to be in there and like, you know, chop it up with people and do whatever. But see, there's different ways uh, that people um, people have different love languages, if you will. Right. It's the same thing kind of here. The best salespeople that I've ever met are not necessarily the best talkers. Right. They might be the best at maybe remembering certain key details. Right. They might be the best at maybe following up with a gift, right? They give, right? They might be the best at showing up at the right time, right? You need something critical and you know you can depend on this person, right? Because when I worked in, in, in high ticket sales, I meaning we were selling very large, you know, very expensive uh, products, right? You know, typically it might be, you know, it, it might be a $100,000 software implementation process. That is not about being a good talker. <laughs> right. That's about being dependable. It's about being knowledgeable. It's about showing up at the right time. It's about following up with the right pieces of information. It's about it. It's so you you might meet a person who seems like they're not really that great of a of a talker. Like they're not going to you know if you want to be a great talker, go be like a an actor or a politician or something. Right. Where where, where you're constantly pulling people's legs, etc. Right. But it's not. It, it, it's about can I count on you? Do you answer my questions? Do you, you show up when I need it? And I, I see the same sort of skill sets in networking. It's the, it's the, it's the person that, you know, because a good talker might show up at an event, get a whole bunch of numbers, people love them, et cetera, and nothing happens, mm -hmm. right? But a great networker will show up. They'll pick up little tidbits of what's going on. What do you need? What's important to you, et cetera? How can I show up, et cetera? And then they'll follow up on the person's birthday or they'll follow up on, hey, listen, uh, you know, you talked about this really great book. I actually just picked it up. Thanks for the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Right. Or or they'll do these. By the way, these things aren't necessarily natural to me. I actually am learning these things over 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 it, it, just observing people that I'm like, man, that person is like they've really got it. Right. And I realize it's not about the hype. Right. It's a, it's not about the. The, the 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 good talker piece because quite honestly i had that growing up right i i, I was i was governor of boy state virginia whatever oh nine or whatever right i was a good talker i could give speeches i could do all of that stuff but i i, I didn't do any of the other stuff mm. right so that's when i saw him being in sales much later i saw it again it's like well you know the talking is great but you know did you send that that follow-up email with that key piece in there that that person really needed Right. Did you do those things? So I think once we shift that perspective a little bit, you realize, you know, what what is your particular way of showing love? Right. And you could pop. You could implement that. Maybe you like to acts of service, maybe gifts, maybe, you know, you like to hype people up, maybe whatever. <laughs> I think you can utilize that within this networking space. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I met a, a real estate agent once. Um, and they they build up their book of business by going to the offices of different attorneys and they didn't they didn't go for their attorney. They went there and they gave out like little cookies, little trinkets on a periodic basis to the people that work there. Staff, yeah, the staff. So then it, it so happens, you know, obviously that these these are uh, uh, staff worked for attorneys who were, you know, they, they worked, they got some property cases, right? They were probate attorneys or whatever, and they got some property cases. And eventually they're like, oh, you should really talk to that guy. Mm -hmm. The staff told the attorney, hey, you should talk to that guy, right? That's how he built up his book of business. And it was like a never ending stream once it opened up. It took some yeah. time, yeah. right? It took a lot of energy, it took whatever, but like that was the way of like communicating and, 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 and connecting and, and networking and stuff was just acts of service. That's it. You said so much good stuff in there, bro. Like uh, there's 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 a lot in there. I know you said we could end the podcast off of the first. We could end the podcast off of that. Like that's that part huge, right? That Venn diagram of people because I think you're right. People do get confused by 
a good sales per a great salesperson, a great communicator, a great networker, right? Like you, they're all a little, they're all a bit different, but they do all have some commonalities. And you said, right, that you don't have to be a good talker, which is the case. I'll take it to the other side of that coin. They all are great listeners. Mm. every single one of them. That's the common theme because in order for you to be able to add value, to make someone feel special, to remember someone's name, to send someone their birthday thing, to remember the book recommendation, you have to be a good listener. That's actually the key to being great at sales, right? You hear all sales, great salespeople say, every great salesperson is just a great listener. We listen for what the person is saying, what they actually want and need, and then we're able to deliver that to them. That's from the sales side. If you're networking, being a great listener, what do we start with? Asking them a question of, hey, who are you looking for? How can I know when I'm talking to the right person for you? Now I'm listening for the answer. When you tell me what you do and all these special things, I'm listening for what your answers are so then I can store that so then I can find better ways to connect or what, whatever the case is, right? Same thing from the communication side of things. Same thing from the communication side. Being a good listener, even though you're, you believe you're a great communicator or you want to be a great communicator, the only way a communicator becomes great is because they've listened to a lot of other communication. You wouldn't be able to connect with your audience. You wouldn't be able to resonate with anyone if you've never listened to anyone. If you don't know your audience or who you're talking to, you wouldn't be able to connect. So actually, I think for all of those three, listening is the commonality. Listening, understanding uh, this cliche saying mentor told me a long time ago, Chris, we have two ears and one mouth. Use them accordingly. You have two ears and one mouth. Use them accordingly. That means you should be. What? Like <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> ah, ah, what was that? That means we should be listening twice as much. As we're talking, you should be listening twice as much as you're talking. In all of these scenarios, when we are networking, when you're shaking hands, when you're building relationships, you should be listening more than you're talking. And that's what allows you to add value. That's what allows you to come back around and really make someone feel special. That's the other commonality about all of them is each of them turns something into an emotion. Right. You, you start to feel something for that person. They know how to bring out the emotion. They know that we are emotional creatures. The great salesperson, the great networker, the, the, the great communicator. They know human beings are emotional creatures. Right. So we don't make decisions just off of logic. It's really based on how we feel or how it will make us feel. And because we can listen, use our listening skills, we can figure out how to move them emotionally to get them to the place of whatever, buying the right thing, understanding our message and taking action, you know, getting a chance to build a better relationship with them, whatever the case is, but listening and allowing that listening to then put you in a position to move their emotions one way or the other, I believe is a huge part. And uh, yeah, man, from there, I think we can wrap this up. What are your closing thoughts, bro? I think this is uh, actually a fantastic episode for people to go back and listen to a couple of times. Um, you know, I see what I did there. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> grab a lot out of, because because quite honestly, I think this is probably one of our better episodes in terms of really providing value. Because uh, this right here, this right this here, right here <laughs> uh, is a game changer. It's a game changer in life. It's a game changer in business. It's a game changer in, in your health, right? And I think the more that you can master this, guys, I've seen, literally, I've seen people build a massive career off of this, mm -hmm. right? People think it's this, you know, it, you're just like uh, uh, great networkers, talkers, et cetera, or whatever, communicate, are just like smoozers. No, 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 no. Getting this down to me, episode 125, we got to mark this as one of our best episodes because yeah. getting this down will completely change everything. And quite frankly, I'm taking quite a bit from it as well that I will be implementing into my life and into my business. It's huge. It's huge. And for everybody that's listening, you can do this exact same thing. 
go back, pick up some of these tips, but most importantly, put this stuff into action, put it into action. If you are in the process of building a business, growing a company, or you just want better relationships, right? At the end of the day, you just want to be around better people. You don't like your circle of friends right now. You don't like your network. No one's adding value to anybody. Well, you go out and you start adding some value to people. Show up to the local event. Go on to meetup, meetup.com. Find out where people are. Go on Facebook. Go on LinkedIn. Find out where people are. Find out where the people that you want to be like or want to be in their network or be around them. Find out where they're hanging out and go there. Shake some hands. Learn how to build some relationships. Listen more than you're talking. Ask, ask some questions. Hey, how can I help you? That's really what you want to know. How can I help you? If I'm coming to the table, I have skill set, I have value. How can I help you get to where you got to go? Now, all of a sudden, we're collaborating. We're, we're building together. Your network equals your net worth. You build the right places, your net worth grows. So this is a solid Fractals. episode, man. Solid episode. Appreciate you guys. Go ahead and make sure you join that group wherever you're watching this. Go ahead and subscribe, like, and let us know uh, that we are headed down the right path so we can continue to produce this. It does take quite a bit of time for us to do this. So if you let us know what direction we should keep going in, it would help us tremendously. And go ahead and share this episode, this particular episode with a friend who's really trying to break that into that next episode echelon the next level in their health and in their wealth and until next time guys go ahead and take care of yourself thank you for tuning in to another episode of the good life we hope you found our discussion helpful and inspiring if you enjoy this episode please take a moment to subscribe and like our channel and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an episode we want to hear from you our listeners if you have any feedback or suggestions for future episodes please Leave us a comment down below. If you're listening to the podcast audio version, we appreciate you just as much. Thank you for tuning into the Good Life Show. And be sure to subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss an episode. We believe that everyone has the potential to live their best life. And we hope our show helps you get that one step closer to achieving your goal. If you know someone who would benefit from our show, please share it with them. And thank you for your continued support. So again, that's it for another week's episode here on The Good Life. We'll see you next week for another inspiring conversation. Welcome to The Good Life.